What's up, everybody, and welcome back to your favorite hour of the week, the Anything Better podcast. Myself, Paul Bursey, Bill Burr. We got our producer, the Greek freak, Andrew Themlis, and you guys are listening to number 30. That's right, Bill. Even 30. Who do we have? Who do we have out of the top number 30s in sports? All right, in no particular order, from Ranker.com. When I was a kid, that that was uh, giving somebody shit. Oh, dude, you... He Burr got ranked on. Yeah, this yeah. is Ranker.com. Number one, Steph Curry. Steph Curry. Okay, that's a great one. He's scared of his own talent. You know, he hits shots and he he, he fucking runs away. Um, Nolan Ryan. It's great. Nolan one. Ryan, come on, man. I saw that guy pitch in 1989 in Fenway Park playing for the Rangers, and you could hear him screaming after every pitch. He throw the pitch, he, his arm would come over, and he go. Ugh! <laughs> I was like my age. Throwing uh, gas, Paul. Throwing fucking gas. Uh, Ken Griffey Jr. I think he wore that. Uh, I don't think he wore that. He wore with the Reds. Yeah, he didn't always have it, but yeah, he had it. That was his dad's number, I believe. Terrell Davis. Great one. Mile high salute. I was at the game, unfortunately, when his career ended against the Jets. When Vinny Testaverde had already lost his fucking Achilles tendon. He lost it, Paul. He couldn't uh, he find co- it. He cost me 700 bucks on a bet because he stumbled at the two. Uh, Marty Brodeur. Martin Saw Brodeur. Him. I don't know. How do people, how do hockey fans rank him all time? The guy played behind the left wing lock of the trap his whole fucking career during the clutch and grab era. He's got the most shutouts ever. It's because no one can get past the red line. Uh, Bernard King. Oh, Paul. Yeah, great finally, one. a New York Nick, <laughs> Bernard King, number 30. We had to go through 30 numbers before they brought up one of the Knicks. Jesus Christ, Paul. I know. Uh, Henrik Lundquist. No, wow, man. This is this is a uh, serious New, list. New York Ranger. Yeah. yeah. Todd Gurley. Great one. Still Todd playing. Gurley. That's, he's such a man because his last name is Gurley. Got Dave sick of people Meggett. teasing him. He Dave did his squad. <laughs> Remember huh? Dave Meggett? Remember Dave Meggett on the on the Giants? No. I remember that name. I remember the name. What about Mosi Tatupo? Who should have been in there? Mosi's Mooses. Rest in peace, Mosi. Rashid Wallace. I love Rashid Wallace. Oh, I love Rashid. Getting the the they should have called him the big technical. <laughs> oh, maybe those Sorry. referees should have fucking grown up. When when did you ever see Rashid wrong? They Misunderstood. They Misunderstood, hated. man. Yeah, Eddie Belfour. Guy. Now that a lot of goaltenders, Eddie Belfour, Ken Griffey Sr. Wore it for the Yankees, Paul. There's another yeah. free agent you cunt spot. Uh, <laughs> Jerry Cheevers for the Boston Bruins. You ever seen his uh, his goalie mask, Paul? No. no. Every time he needed stitches, he got a little uh, he had a little stitches drawn on his on his mask. It was completely huh? covered. When I was a kid, I thought the whole team autographed his mask. Because I, <laughs> I thought he was like a fan like me. Orlando Cepeda. Okay. Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah. Here you go, Paul. Going deep. Going deep into uh, hockey history. Gump Worsley. Wow. Now, just with that name, Paul, when do you think, what, what decade did this guy play? His name was Gump Worsley. 60s. Further. Wow. Further back. 50s? 50s. Wow. Dude, Gump Worsley. I would have said 1930s. Dude, maybe he Gump gave people is... all, maybe people gave he gave a lot of people shit on the ice. You know, don't give me any of that gump. Oh, oh don't dude. get gumps out there. It's trying to stir it up. Tim Raines. But he wore it for uh, the White Sox. Coming down to the end here. Del Curry. Charlotte wow. Hornets. Ryan yeah. Miller. Wow. All right. We're 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 grasping here, but dude. Dennis Martinez. Oh, Icky Woods, the, the Icky Shuffle. Oh, shit. All what right. What would have happened if he didn't get injured? Terry Sawchuck. Now, you must have seen him with his face all busted up, right, Paul? Bernie Parent. This is like the fifth goalie. David Maggot made the list, number 22. Yes. Chris Osgood. Moose Haas. How long is this list? Philip Lindsay. George the Iceman McGinnis. Willie Randolph. I'm just oh, Willie! Reading him an hour from now, John Cude. Who the fuck is that? Bruce Gossett. 
Kerry K- Kittles. Seth uh, Curry. I'm going to end there from Steph to Seth. Jesus, well, Paul. Well, it's kind of ironic that those are on the list because big news came out today, and it's unfortunate, but it looks like uh, Steph and Seth's parents, after 30 years, uh, are calling it quits. Uh, and they're, they're, you know, accusing each other of stuff. We won't go there, but let me ask you this question. You're married 30 years. Your kids are both successful basketball players. There's millions in the family. You don't really got to worry about money, but you were married that long. Your kids are old and grown up. Do you get back out there? What? So I guess you could date, but would you consider marriage after all that? Or no, would you just I think you like, gotta call it a career? You got you gotta know when to get it out. You gotta, you gotta know you gotta know when to get out. I mean, yeah. You put oh, 30 to get years it out, in. okay. <laughs> Dude, if you if you get if you get married almost at 30, you put 30 years in and you get out at 60. Wait, what are you doing? Although, dude, at yeah. all of those old folks' homes, you heard about that. They like they, the fucking STDs are out of control. No. Yeah, dude, it's, it's horrible. It's just a bunch of old people banging. It's not a joke, dude. What? Yeah, they're out there. Put on a little music to get her in the mood. Why did I? Hey, Maryland. Hey, Maryland. You know I get frisky on poker night. Get in here, Maryland. Oh, did you see the varicose vein on Ethel? Oh my God, dude! I, you can't tell me that they don't have blackout curtains, dude. <laughs> when they're banging, some of those guys, it's like, dude, you think the horrors of war were bad? How about the two of you naked, fucking going at it, dude? I mean, I couldn't imagine like, but to them, they don't care. You know, to us, we picture veins and all that shit. To them, they're fucking psyched, dude. <laughs> They're psyched. Jello in their program before bed at nine. Get a little fucking handy from fucking whatever her I name think that is. That's what it is. I, yeah. Okay. Let's just get out of this pulse. Get out of this room. <laughs> Open the curtains. Don't look. Just get out of here. Go out the uh, side door. Oh my god. Let me take my teeth out. Oh. Uh, and uh, that's how yeah, it ends, Paul. That's how it ends. Look. You married. You had kids. Yeah. Everybody said they loved you. That you got the card on Father's Day, and this is how it ends. Uh, you trying to tag some fucking seventy-three-year-old, hoping she doesn't have the clap. Can you uh, imagine yeah. being seventy-seven, walking in with your war vet hat with your little medals on it and shit? Yeah, but how do they have STDs? That's what I want to understand. If they're all they haven't banged in forever, who's getting them? Who's giving them STDs? All it takes is one of them, Paul. The orderlies to go down to the IHOP on a Thursday night when the fucking Medicare checks come in and all those <laughs> dirty whores are coming by trying to get that, get a piece of that Medicare check, maybe get some uh, pigs in the blanket or whatever, you know, all it takes is one of them to tag one of them in there and then it's in there. Uh, and then, you it's know, just- I bet that was in the original script of Cocoon and they took it out. Because Hollywood's so afraid to make a truthful movie. (laughs) Go for Brimley with the fucking pissing green, jumping into the pool. No, what you have to what you have to do is you have to find a chick that was also in something for that many years. And you guys have an understanding like you go to dinner and you lay it out on the table. Look, I like you. You like me. We had our three decade marriage. We had our kids grown. We let's just get a house or whatever. We'll have fun. I like hanging with you. We don't have to do the whole fucking legal thing. You know what I mean? And then just see what happens. That's I bet people have done it like that. Yeah. Yeah, because listen, if if you're in your late 50s or 60s and your kids are like in their 30s, late there and you did it all, it's like, what are you going to do? Have a ceremony and then just do that. It's like you've already done it, you know? Do you, here's a question. Do, you, do your kids care? If you get divorced, they're in your third, late 30s. Do you give a shit? I think the Currys do only because of all the nasty stuff that's going back and forth and being said about their parents. And it's. I public. wasn't talking about them. I'm saying yeah. if you were in your 30s, right? Look, if you're a kid and your parents get divorced, it's devastating. But if you're in your 30s, 
Yeah, if you're in your 20s or 30s and it's not public to everybody and your parents just go, hey, it's ending. It's like, yeah, I had a friend in school who's like their parents just waited for them to all get out and go to college. Like it was almost like they knew. And then it was like, oh, yeah, so and so they're left. They're with other people now. And they were like, do you care? And they were like, nah, you know, because you because, you know, and I also think kids get a sense at home what's going on. Kids know. It's like a franchise moving. <laughs> Second, the kids go out. It's like the Colts leaving Baltimore, going to Indianapolis. Middle of the night, pack the middle fucking- of the night. Yeah, <laughs> that was such a pussy move. Yeah, you should just yeah. done it in the day. We're leaving. All right, but unless they did it like, like, all right. Well, we don't want to have a riot. We don't. Well, they hurt did it for people. safety. Yeah, they did it for safety, dude, because you get a bunch of drunk football fans standing there watching the buses leave. Uh, it's not going to go. Who, well. who do the guys do they get? Did they hire Indianapolis people to drive those trucks out? Can you imagine if it was a Baltimore fan, but he needed the money? Just drive, <laughs> <laughs> Just driving the truck out. Oh, God. <laughs> I dedicated. Why can't stuff. choosing the money and the right thing ever be the same? Have you noticed that? If there's a decision to make and there's ever choosing more money or doing the right thing, when is it ever the same? Yeah, I mean, never. I got one for you. Is there anything worse than seeing a guy in a Brooklyn Nets jersey and the name on the back is Biggie? Ugh. I saw that at Grand Central Station yesterday. I went down. I did the Jim and Sam show at Sirius. And I went to Grand Central and I missed my train. So I had to wait 45 minutes. So I go get a sandwich and a kid is holding a skateboard. He's got a backpack on over his Brooklyn Nets jersey. And the name on the back said Biggie. I've, and it's like, I wanted to say Biggie's a Knicks fan. Rest his soul. He was a fucking Knicks fan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's hey, like- something I forgot, though. The, yeah. the Brooklyn Nets... Before they were the Brooklyn Nets, were the New Jersey Nets. Before that, they were the New York Nets. They were the New York Nets. Wow, what year? And Dr. J in the ABA, Dr. J paid, played for him. So they finally came back, Paul. Ah, I did not know that. But so maybe listen. that'll take a little bit of, you know, because I don't like seeing you as angry as me. No, but just like you're putting a rapper's name on. It's like I get that he was from Brooklyn and he rapped about being from bed Brooklyn, but like to get a Jersey and have was it, it a say, white kid or no, it was a white kid. Ah, then that's bad. The black kid. It's like, all right, I get it. Brooklyn no, no, pride it or whatever. A, it was a what white it used kid. to be. Bill, I you know, how weird is it now to see a white guy and you're like, where do you live? He's like bed And it just doesn't even make any sense. It's like, you live there. You can live there. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When is it going to stop Paul? I, I don't know. I think that I think it'll stop when the Knicks beat them in a series. No, I don't mean that. Like, when is oh. this urban <laughs> sprawl of making everything a glass tower and look like a bed, bath and beyond? Like, where is all this money coming from? I don't know. I don't know. You know what? We should listen to that financial podcast. Maybe yeah. we knew what an NFT was. Did you know how I know I'm getting older? I don't like people like, oh, you saw that thing, right? Like you saw what's going on in the news. I'm like, no. I don't watch the news. I'm up here in the country away from everything. I go do my shows. I don't watch. You never know what was going on in the news. Let's stop acting like you were a news (laughs) junkie at some point. No, but I knew like rappers. I knew like pop culture shit. Oh, yeah. I I, I knew like I kind of knew what was going on. And now I'm just like, I feel like that old guy. Like when my son or daughter goes, Dad, did you hear about so and so? I'm just like, no, you're weird. (laughs) Like, no, I knew I was getting old. I can't make it from waking up to going to bed at night without sleeping at some point in between. Yeah. I nod off in chairs now. Chairs just, it's over. I, <laughs> I, I used to <laughs> have a joke. It's getting heavy. Yeah, my friends at 40 would yawn a lot. I remember when I was in my mid-30s, all my friends who would be between like 40 and 45 would yawn around a lot. And I would be like, oh, shit. They were like, dude, you'll see it coming. You'll see it coming. And now, Catch yourself yeah. Catch up with you. Now naps hit. Now naps hit you. You know, yeah, dude. Like I used to. You ever see a guy like sixty five go? Why does he walk like that? Like why is he walking so slow like that? And then you're like, you get a little older. You're like, oh, okay. No, he stopped stretching. Yeah, 
Yeah. And everything gets all shrunk up. All these fucking people sitting in desks, you know, at the cubicles, like, you know, someday, man, someday I'm going to get that fucking corner office. You just fucking sit there. Look at Andrew stretching right now. All of those guys <laughs> fucking sitting there, men and women. That's so as, right? In the front, connects your bottom with the top. That thing shrinks the fuck up. And then, then you get tight and it wants to pull you forward. Then your lower back has to compensate. Then you, oh, my back. Oh, my back fucking hurts. And what do they do? They start putting Ben Gay on it. The shack patch, whatever the fuck he's peddling. Oh, icy hot shit. Icy yeah. hot. It's like he should be telling people to stretch. He knows that. Yeah. He knows that. He wants a new Buick, Paul. <laughs> How funny is it that anybody's going to believe that that guy's driving a Buick? It's like, yeah, maybe if you ripped out the front seat, he sat in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Made it one long door. Patrick, you had to do that with his... Buick. <laughs> yeah. I'm worth over $800 million. <laughs> Yeah, LeBron. I can't drives wait a to Kia. drive a 2021 Buick. <laughs> All Star Weekend. I know what I'm riding. I'm riding in a Buick. Yeah, it's so full of shit, dude. It's a fucking old man car. I would love to see what Shaq really drives. No, he's got. You could watch a bunch of the shit that he's got on there. He's got like just souped up trucks, SUVs. Like they take. Does the he got a Mazda Miata? And his waist is like up at the top of the fucking. He's riding in a matchbox car at the top Dude, of the put windshield. A Miata under his arm like it's a skateboard. <laughs> Dude, he could drive a Miata and be like pushing cars away from him. <laughs> uh, I saw um, Patrick Ewing had a big um, Mercedes. And uh, somebody was saying that it was all custom. Front seat was like, they have to put like another... It's like the equivalent of a fat guy on a plane getting the extender. They do something with oh, the yeah. front seat where the thing could keep going back. Yeah. No, I, I you know, like that divider between the front yeah. and the back seat, like that's where their head is. They, that's why, you, you know, when was the last time you saw Patrick Ewan driving on the street? Yeah, no. Because he's hiding behind that thing, Paul. <laughs> he's not in the front seat. He's not in the back seat. He's in limbo. How uncomfortable it must how uncomfortable must it be to be like seven one, seven two in life? Other than a basketball court, it must be, you know, those guys gotta duck their heads. Every house is like a fucking hobbit house. You ever see them like on like TV shows when they're in a normal size house? They just look like Yeah, it's like they're in a dollhouse. I bet <laughs> if you if you like buy like an NBA uh guy's house after he blows all his money trying to fucking, I don't know, do whatever the fuck he's trying to do, right? Like, I imagine all the door jams, you know, whatever you call them, the door frames. I mean, there's no fucking way he's walking around in his house doing this the whole day. No. I bet the counters are up higher, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just everything's everything's just like up to here, and all of a sudden you feel like you're eight years. You just walk around. Hey, you guys want an egg? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get all of this fixed. Dude, have you stuck oh, me 10 a... fingers? I want to open up the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you stood next to a seven foot man? Like, what's the closest you've ever... I shook the hand of somebody, I believe, like six nine, six ten. I was there just... when you and Barnick shook fucking uh Patrick Ewing's hand. Dude, it's like it overlaps like this. Like, like it's just it's it's they're just gigantic human beings, dude. It's really unbelievable, man. And, like, when you watch a basketball game, I remember thinking John Starks was small. And then he walked in a room, like, walked past me, and I was just like, oh, that's like a fucking tall man. <laughs> like it's just yeah. – but he's, you know, he's next to Oakley. He Mason, looks like he's 5'8 when he's playing. Yeah, they do. I remember a long time ago I was doing uh, this comedy club in Kansas City, and the backup tight end for the Chiefs, like the the, the blocking tight end came in. And, uh, dude, he was one of the biggest human beings I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and the next day I go to the game and I watch him blocking on a punt and some guy just hitting him and sending him sailing like three feet away. And I'm thinking, how big is that other fucking – he's like – like he looked indestructible. I'm like, you're looking at the guy like that guy's never going to get hurt in a game. Yeah. Then you go to the game and you watch him get hit. It looked like, it looked like I got hit. Dude. Those defensive ends we grew up watching, Derek, uh, Derek Thomas, Derek Coleman, no, Derek Thomas, rest his soul, uh, Reggie White, Bruce Smith, 
Uh, obviously, Taylor, when you look at the men they threw aside, like they like it would be like me and you going to a fucking elementary school. It's they're throwing men around, dude. Men. Oh, those are 300 pounders. And Reggie White would just use his forearm like a club and he'd go like that. And a 300 pounder would just go flying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, like those guys are a whole other uh, a whole other thing, dude. That's why, man, there should be average side sports. Seriously, dude, it's not fun. Like when I watch a guy seven four dunking and everyone goes, oh shit! It's like it's like, dude, he, he doesn't even jump. He his like toes come this far off the ground. It's yeah, like, I know, but those six six guys, I know. Oh, good, Paul. You know something? If you weren't big enough, too bad. Your dream died. Go get a fucking job. I'm so sick of everybody having. Everybody gets to make it now. It's everybody so makes it. Everybody's special. Everybody's fucking unique. Yeah. It's just like, why don't you just accept the fact that you're not good enough and you you're can't fucking punk. mediocre and try to exist within that and just realize that your job in the NFL highlight film is to be the guy going like this in the, in the fucking crowd. Okay, that's who you are. You're 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 in the crowd. I want to dunk, Bill. I want to dunk once. Oh. And for some reason, I was taken. I was taken from me. Oh, dude, how great would it be to dunk once, just to fucking flush it on somebody once? Oh, I that's what makes that. it great. And the fact that only a few people can do it at the professional level is why is why we go. And I'll tell you. And it also makes it really crazy to see like guys like Iverson, and guys that were like five eleven, six feet that were doing it at that level. That's what's really. Like Shaq was like, dude, I've never seen a guy go into the trees like fucking Iverson. Just how tough he was, skinny, small. My buddy mm -hmm. stood next to him. My buddy was six one. My buddy stood next to him. My buddy's like, dude, the NBA says he's six foot. He's not. My buddy goes, dude, he's barely like five eleven, and he was a fucking animal. How nuts is that? That he could play. I'll tell with you what's nuts. How many people lie about how? How many guys lie about how tall they are? I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. And I know what you're trying to do with me. I I'm wasn't trying to do that with you. Oh, okay. Because I, I took my socks off the other time. And I said, the lady said, you just hit 5'8". I'm 5'8 on the button. All my licenses <laughs> have said it. <laughs> I thought you were going I at me. I swear to God, Paul. Oh. I was not talking about that. Oh, because one time we were talking and you looked at me. And I know a guy that tells me he's 6'2". I'm 5'9 and 3 quarters. And this fucking guy, I'm looking at him eyeball to eyeball. He goes, because I'm 6'2", and I'm trying to think, like, well, maybe he used to be 6'2", when he did the Hulk's finishing move. Did you ever see the Hulk? Hulk Hogan? Oh, he lost, like, what did he lose? A couple Three inches? Three inches. Yeah. Three yeah. inches in his fucking arms and shit for a 6'7 guy, and they hang down to his knees. Yeah. That guy could grab anything you want in a room and never get up. Just His fucking arms are, are ridiculously long. But when I saw him at the airport, I was like, I remember this guy used to be six seven. He looks like six four, six five. And I found out him doing jumping up and landing on his ass all those years. He lost three inches of height. He probably had back surgery where they took a vertebrae out too and fused them together. All that shit, dude. They don't they take a vertebrae out? They'll they'll yeah, they'll what they'll do is they'll now they could take a Doesn't out the cable a, stick out then? They could take uh you mean a nerve? Yeah. Well, what they like could phone do phone lines, what they could do now, man, there's, there's so much shit they could do, but what they do is they'll take the disc out. They'll take the disc out and they'll fuse two together. And now they even have plastic stuff where if a disc is degenerating, um, cause I have all those neck, uh, neck issues that they could actually put, do the things they could do. They could actually put a new like di plastic disc pretty nuts, but I mean, he, he would How do that nervous surgery. are you as a doctor working on somebody's spine? Yeah one little twitch okay here we go here we go here we go dude that's that's <laughs> fucking scary bone particles <sighs> had a bad night hung over hung over oh, yeah Christ, look at this guy c4 and c5 oh, jesus christ what isn't there like a reason i think andrew you should look this uh, there's a reason why they like surgery super early in the morning there's like a there's like a I think somebody will write in about it. But Gives I them heard, a chance like, to catch the red eye to a different country if they fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, dude, no. that's uh, dude.
dude, there are just people that are just so fucking smart, like like neurosurgeons or like you just spinal doctors and like people like that brain dude, brain surgery, women. <laughs> I mean, have you what seen about- some of the some of the, the, the fucking hype out there about women? I mean, they're, they're amazing. Strongest people in the world, dude. They're unbelievable. I mean, if we would just let them run everything, Paul, there would literally be no problems. I actually that's how far adv- <laughs> that's how far advanced they are. I actually think a female president would be dope if it was the right one. A little iron fist. Though. I would say the same thing about a guy. A guy president would be great if you got the right one. We've only got one right one my whole life. Rex MD, everybody. Should Viagra really cost $90? I don't think so. That's why I got to tell you about Rex MD. RexMD.com has FDA approved generic Viagra starting at just $2 per tablet and delivered discreetly to your door. <laughs> you know what? It's about time old poor people got to continue fucking. Yeah, it's just dude, all about it... rich people still banging a Hooters waitress. Let a let a guy who paid his dues in life, eighty year older, get a get a rager. For no, I want to f- see that empty dishwasher box moving on the side of the street. <laughs> uh, here's how it works: just fill out a brief survey, and uh, if you uh, was that appreciate was it? Hold on. Oh, you're married. That's appreciate. You had, just haven't heard that since you were single. Uh, Sorry. No, no, that's not appreciate. It's appropriate. Yeah, appropriate. appropriate. There you go. Jesus, Paul, too many peas in there. That really threw you for a loop. No, I'm going like appreciate. Why would she appreciate it? It's a, it's a natural. Um, here's how it works. Just fill out a brief survey, uh, if appropriate. <laughs> oh, you literally tapped uh, out on that word. Actually, yeah, yeah, dude. I, I and I it one. is over. Yeah, Paul, it's actually appropriate. <laughs> appropriate. Not appropriate, appropriate. Like, it's appropriate that you get this. It's appropriate. Okay, appropriate. What did I say? You said it wrong, too. Oh, this is like WWE characters. We got to be a tag team. Uh, Yes. Uh, All right. Anyway, what is it? How do you say it? Appropriate. 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 If appropriate, you can try and start. Jesus, what are we in high school still? Uh, you can try a starter pack of generic Viagra. Uh, starter packs are currently available to new customers. RexMD.com has helped over 100,000 I just men. realized how confident I said appropriate. It's appropriate, Paul. Yeah, and I was like. What are you, an ISO? What, I think the way you said it was so confidently that I looked at it like I squinted. Like, it doesn't look like that, but. Paul, one of those uh, spell and beat champions couldn't have told me anything different. I was oh so confident god. I was saying that. I apologize. Go ahead. Oh god! Every doctor and lawyer listening to this thing is like, "Why do I listen to this fucking fucking morons?" Oh, uh, fuck those guys! What they can read a book and memorize it, cut hilarious. you open and not kill you. All right, I'll respect uh, that. Keep you out of jail. RexMD.com has helped over a hundred thousand men get generic Viagra from the comfort of home. There's no copay. There are no doctor office visits, and your shipping is always free. Uh, if you're looking for generic Viagra, Rex MD has made the process fast, easy, and affordable. So don't wait another minute to get that rager. <laughs> Rex hey, MD all of you should now- be standing up for the national anthem. <laughs> Show your patriotism with Rex MD, a pair of sweatpants, no boxers. Just 80,000 <laughs> ragers going on at the at the next football game. Rex MD. A stealth bomber goes by. <laughs> Rex MD is now offering starter packs for generic Viagra for new customers. Visit RexMD.com slash better right now to get started. That's Rex, uh, R-E-X-M-D.com slash better. I will be honest. Two dollars a rager is a pretty nice for a guy that's having a little trouble. Two bucks. I don't know. It's a pretty good deal. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, is there anything funnier than a rager? No. And there's only one solution. All right. Uh, (laughs) I mean, that problem needs to be taken care of. All right. Modern finance podcast. 
Uh, are NFTs here for the long haul? I, I, don't, I don't even know what that is. Which cryptocurrency is a fad? How does decentralized finance work? These are some of the questions I didn't even know I had, Paul. Modern Finance Podcast, hosted by Kevin Rose. Oh, Kevin the Rose looks to answer these questions and many more about the investment marketplace. Modern Finance is the crypto show for the novice and expert alike. Their mission is to demystify crypto. What is it, Paul? Just talk to Kevin Rose and the world of NFTs without dumbing it down. Well, you're right there. You and me are out, Paul. Uh, yeah. True Ventures. True Ventures partner, Kevin Rose, interviews top tech experts and entrepreneurs exploring modern finance tools and helping others understand cryptos, NFTs, and even traditional finance hacks. Modern Finance offers two shows on a single podcast feed, one weekly consensus episode that explores weekly news and distills it into a digestible information, and then deeper interviews with individuals, crypto founders, and NFT artists. Ten years ago, some people called cryptocurrency a scam. Five years ago, people thought it was a fad. Now it's already over a trillion dollar market and growing. It's like they're talking about the hip history of hip hop, Paul. Yeah. Um, the Modern Finance Podcast helps you make sense of all the coins. NFTs, I swear to God, if this fucking guy says NFT one more time. Um, now is the time to equip yourself with the knowledge of where things are going. I'm going to listen to this, Paul, just to find out what an NFT is. <laughs> um, I thought that was like the, the initial offering once it comes out on the market. And all those guys scurrying around with their pieces of paper on the floor there. The financial landscape is harder than ever to navigate. But you don't have to do it alone. Download and subscribe to Modern Finance wherever you listen to podcasts. That's Modern Finance wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't be the last person on the next train out. Listen to Modern Finance. I had to do the math on that. Paul, don't be the last person on the next train out. Hey, hey just glad you got this okay. <laughs> Listen to Modern Finance and get ahead of the future of finance. One Jimbo, what? Jimmy Carter was the only, only fucking guy. He, he sat down and gave us the fucking truth tea we needed. This country's addicted to oil. You put solar panels on the fucking, it, I'm telling you, on the White House. Then old fuckface came in and he took him down with his Fonzie haircut. He put solar powered things on the White House? He put solar panels on the White House in the late 70s. Wow. The hostage situation, he avoided getting into a fucking never ending war over that shit. He knew they were nuts. Don't go in there. Dude, Let's I'm gonna... wean ourselves off of oil. They're going to go bankrupt. You want to know? We're on the make... path, and everybody ripped him down. Said he was fucking weak. He was gonna, fucking weak. I'm gonna tell you something right now. Look at him now, Paul. Look at every other fucking president retires. What do they do? They go on a big speech tour. Their wife wears some hooker boots, and they end up with a fucking a palace in Martha's Vineyard, right? That's what they yep. all fucking do, or they buy aquifers down in uh, South America. That's what the fuck they do. Jimmy Carter's out there still in his 90s building homes for poor people. Guy won a Nobel Peace Prize after being president. All the rest of them put their feet up. Bring in the horse. Where's my mansion? Name that library after me. It was the only human being, decent human being, who really gave a fuck about meatheads like you and me, I believe. Uh, you know what? That's a good point. You made a Everybody lot of. Everybody else was fingering somebody in the over office. Well, I mean, carving we, up the world. I mean, that's a little. You might not want to say all of them, but you know. Come on, Paul. But uh, Paul, you're telling me right now, you're in a house that has columns. You got security, and you're in a round room. You telling me you could lay off? You got a yeah, red dude. phone. Any any time during the day, you could blow up the world. One phone call. Do it. Click. Well, I mean, you're no, telling I'm, me your ego could fucking handle that. I'm going to tell you something. You're going to make fun I of me. Said, I would make do a good it. president. I would make a good president, dude. And then I'm being dead serious. Well, last I'm week being, you were an Olympian. I mean, Paul, I don't know what you can't do. No, no, no. I, you're a very I, inspirational person. I'm, I'm fucking reasonable, dude. I'm reasonable. I would be a good president. <laughs> 
Could that be your campaign slogan? <laughs> Paul Versey, I'm fucking reasonable. No, dude, I'm reasonable. I would sit down, I would talk to you. You know what I like out. about this Versey guy? He's fucking reasonable. I'm Paul Versey, and I fucking approve that message. Yeah, man. Come on, dude. Put me in the White House. Come on, dude. If I had the right people around me, good decisions would be made, dude. Good decisions. Paul, you would just be said made. nothing. What do you mean? You put me in the White House? You put me in the White House? I mean, come on, man. I would make good decisions if you put good people around me. In other words, I'm too fucking dumb to make these decisions. But you get Listen. some smart guys around me. Dude, John F. Kennedy, rest his soul. He was my age, 40s, hanging out. His oh, brother you don't have in- it in you. I could do it, man. Why not? I'll tell you why. Because you're hey, too Paul, good a person. A, a you're going to bed with those. You're going to go to bed and sleep at night with those dead bodies on your fucking brain. If, listen, if things are necessary for the betterment of people, you got to do. What, what does that do. mean? The betterment of what people, Mister President? It <laughs> it means, first of all, what bodies? Do you find would be this a- line of questioning funny, Mister President? Which what bodies are you talking about? The bodies you just were my- blowing up hypothetically. I would not blow up, but that's the thing with me, though. I'm reasonable. I would talk to the leader over there and go, look, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Well, you just okay. said now you're contradicting your point, Mr. President. No, it's contradicting. It's not a word, Mr. Media man. I'm no, not running, though. I'm not the leader of the free world. <laughs> I think what you've just said is completely inappropriate. I- <laughs> Appropriate. No, I would be like, look, I don't want to do this. OK, I could send fucking planes. OK. I could send planes now. I could make a phone call and put you people in a world to hurt. I don't want to fucking do that. I don't want to do that to kids. I don't want to do that to women. and ch- I don't want to fucking do it. If you don't leave me a choice, though, so I'll, how do we find a medium? That's what I would say. Uh, Mr. President, why do I have to live my life the way you say? It's my country. I'm not telling you how to live. Well, then you got to stop fucking torturing your people, though, man. Showing it on TV. What am I going to do? Oh, uh, What about uh, Hurricane Katrina? You leave I mean, all I, the poor black people on the other side of the bridge. You let their dogs drown. I mean, Slavery, all, genocide of the Native Americans. I mean, didn't the Nazis use your tools to figure out how to get rid of the Jews? <laughs> well, first of all, I wasn't in office when that happened. Why don't right? you clean up your fucking house before you talk about my house? How about that? Why don't you stay fucking home? Oh, uh, First, you're going to talk to me like that. Then I will send the fucking planes. Of course you oh. will. Why don't you come over here with your Air Jordans? Huh? Why don't you come over here and I'll see what you do. Hiding behind your planes. Oh, big I'll man. Fuck, I'll big be man. in a fucking F-18 fucking man with your fucking planes. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck Uncle Sam. And fuck the Babe Ruth. And for, that re- and for that reason right there, Bill, for that reason right there, I'd be able to live with those bodies. And that's why you can't make an emotional decision. All it took was one Yankee getting made fun of and you're ready to nuke a fucking planet. Mr. President, how are we doing that? He brought Babe Ruth into this. (laughs) Babe Babe Ruth Ruth is one of the greatest Americans of all time. Oh, shit. Nah, man. You'd be a good president. I could see you being a good president. Nah, you're a reasonable man. Paul, being reasonable and... (laughs) Fucking doing that job is two different things. That's all you need to be is reasonable. That's the slogan, dude. Paul Percy, <laughs> I'm fucking reasonable. <laughs> Paul, what are you going to do about the climate? Ah, big, big truck electric. Next oh. question. You over there. <laughs> dude, my rallies would be the shit. People would be holding big truck electric signs. Absolutely, Paul. Yeah, I got to tell you something. You can tap in to the dumbness of the general population. And that is a, that's a key. That's all successful people. They tap into Joe six pack. He puts his pants on one leg at a time. He gets up there. You know, they don't say what they're really saying. Joe six pack. He's too stupid to run anything. Just, you know, tell him he's a fucking great American and uh, he'll pick up boxes all day for you. While you get on a spaceship shaped like a dick. And go to outer space. I love that he put the helmet on it. I love it. I, I fucking love that he did that. He should have had balls on it. He should have had two fucking arms with the hair plugs coming fingers. out of the fucking balls. I don't like the guy. I'm not into the man. I'm just saying. 
I, I, there's something. Listen, I'm not saying he's a good guy, but there's something, something in the way it looked like a dick. So many fucking people hate instantly hate billionaires. And I don't fucking like that. It's like good for that guy. And if you don't like that guy, take the packages off your fucking porch. OK, because everybody's used that guy made life. That guy, how many people don't go Christmas shopping anymore, which annoys me. OK, I always tell people, no, no, just go online and fucking Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. It's like, no, man, go to the fucking mall, go to the store, pick out what the person that you love, you think they would want. Tell them to fucking bag it, wrap it up, put a fucking ribbon on it. OK, put some thought into the fucking process. Oh, you're all of- over the map here. You're saying he ended that shit. No, I'm saying that I'm saying he ended it, but all the people use it. I said, I didn't like that, but all the people that don't like him use his shit. And it's like, then don't use it. Oh, but it's convenient for you. Oh, okay. So I'm going to use his shit. But then when he goes up to space, fuck you, Mr. Billionaire. It's like, pick one. Did the guy make your life? I think there's a lot of flaws in your theories. Nah, I'm reasonable. I don't think. I'm going to fight with my wife next time. We fight. Stacy, Stacy, listen to me. I'm, reason- I'm a reasonable man. You got to have the F-bomb for him. I'm fucking reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> what would your slogan be? What would Bill Burr's slogan be running for president? 2024. Uh, don't Get pick me because I don't here. want it. Don't what? pick me because I don't want it. <laughs> You're making a mistake. Oh, that's funny. I'm oh, a loner. I've, I've, I feel like I've worked hard in my life and I'm tired. Dude, you would be Bill done Burr, after the I'm first- I'm fucking tired. I'm tired, Dude. Paul. <laughs> Dude. I'm tired. You'd be done after the first press conference because after the first, the first question you didn't like would start to annoy you. No, the no, I would love one- the press conferences. I would love the press conferences. You'd get mad though, dude. It'd be the rest. It'd be the meetings, sitting there watching that guy who takes his loafers off and he's rubbing his feet together with his dress socks on. <laughs> That's what would drive me nuts. But the the press conferences, I would have a blast at. Uh, <laughs> Why are you guys sitting here acting like I'm running shit? I love you know, when Bill. Why? When why? The head you goes? know. You know I'm just like I'm a fucking puppet here. Uh. <laughs> Dude, you'd I'm just resign. here to give you a face to get mad at. You'd resign in three months. You'd resign in 90 days. You'd go, you know what? You would just put your hands up. And go, I'm not dealing with these fucking assholes. Good no. luck. No. Paul, I wouldn't even, you, Paul, we wouldn't even get there. Paul, I don't even, I, I, we, we couldn't even Dude. run for local office and get elected. Unless Dude, people I, were doing it as a joke. <laughs> what qualifications do we have? We're antisocial. We've both gone in and out of having problems with substances. Yeah. We love a stick. Dude, the, the, that, yeah, was like, you're like, yeah. <laughs> we'd win a town. We'd, meet, we'd win maybe a local primary or something. If I got elected, Paul, this is what I, I would make public schools good again. I'd make them great again. And I would open up Cuba. Ooh, I like that. Vacation to Havana. I love it. No, no, no. That's not for us. It's for them. It's their country. We were Where wrong we all those years ago trying to put Best Buys and think that's their country. It's their natural resources. I, I'd dial it all back, Paul. I'd reel in the fucking empire. Okay. I'd reel it in. This is me reeling it in. I don't know what I'd do once I reeled it in. This is why I wouldn't be president. That's my <laughs> slogan. Bill Barber, we're reeling it in. I do support the troops. I support them coming home, standing on our borders. Yeah. Myrtle Beach, Revere Beach, South Beach, Redneck Riviera. Hermosa, Seal Beach. I don't know what, I, you know, whatever. That'd be great, dude. Just like, a, oh, God, that'd be great to be the mayor of a beach town. <laughs> yeah, but even there, you can't get anything done. Because there's always somebody else that wants hey, to do the opposite thing. And then yeah. they try to get you, you know, they start sending whores over to your house and eventually you give in. 
Do you know how many dreams have died over a Hummer? One stupid fucking look at look at look at look at what happened, Bill Clinton. He'll never be respected again. No, right after that blowjob, he just became a big pasty guy in slacks. That's all he ever was. Yeah, and it made his voice, it like made his voice sound what it should sound. Like before he did that, you were like, oh, president with an accent like that. Then after he did that, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Hey, how about we go around back and do the Rose Garden? <laughs> You're like, oh, there it is. There he is. There he is. I knew I saw that guy at a tailgate. Come on, sweetie. Just pull pull your skirt up. There it is. There it is. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, listen, I would love please. to see their holiday cards to each other. I mean, you want to just talk about something that's just been over for so fucking long. Oh, my God, dude. They probably don't even spend, I would bet they don't spend it like more than two hours a day together. It's a lot of Andrew. water under that bridge, Paul. Look, look, look at Andrew. Our producer Andrew's just gone. I don't yeah. even, yeah, like he, they might not even live to, like they may have a residency that is under the Clintons. And then they probably just don't even live together, dude. They probably like, you know, their daughter Chelsea's out married. Their grandparents now, they don't live together, dude. They don't fucking go on hikes. They, I don't, I couldn't imagine that. You don't ever really see them together. Like, unless it's like during a voting election where like they show up together, but like they don't, no, they don't. You know, I always thought was wild as far as like the level of fame you get when you're one of the two people left running for president. And then you lose, you give the I lost speech, and then the next day, all of the I used to do a bit about that. All those news trucks just drive away. It's like the Super Bowl team that loses. Nobody remembers. You have this, right? I don't remember. Like, well, you remember all the teams that lost because your fucking team was in it every year. But for people that just watch I also like to think I'm a student of the game. <laughs> No, but like I don't know. Other than the teams that the Giants went against, I don't know who lost the, like oh who lost that suit. But you know who won. Same thing with the presidency. <clears throat> you know that Howard Dean guy that went yeah. Everybody knew that guy for about ten minutes. Gone. No, he's legendary. <laughs> we're going to Arkansas. We're going to New Mexico. And we're going up to Cleveland. Ah! And people were like, okay. <laughs> His voice just didn't crack. He just went, yeah. He went, yeah, or something like that. So, It'd be ah! funny if trucks, trucks just started backing out after he, after he did that. It's just like, all right, take care. It's kind of funny what, like, what little thing could end your, presidency can your presidential campaign. You know, Mike Dukakis sticking his head out of the tent. Howard Dean going, ah, right? Like little fucking things. Who was the guy that said you'll never get something on me? And then they caught him with a woman on a yacht. Oh, the, Gary Hart. Gary Hart. He's like, go look, dig in. He was like daring him. Go look. Well, in, because look. they never used to because they never used to mess with uh, mistresses. Mistresses were considered off limits. And he was also talking to the mainstream press and they had never done uh, that sort of National Enquirer type shit. It was considered beneath them, if you can believe it. Now. It's become all of that. I actually did. I was in a, in a movie about that. Oh, okay. called The Front Runner. Okay. <clears throat> and he what? They found him on a yacht with his mistress, right? Sitting on his lap or something? They didn't find him on a yacht. What happened? Now, somebody took a picture of him on the yacht with the mistress. And uh, I, you know what? I forget. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I don't know why you would go like, yeah, I dare you. Come find me. See, it's like, what do you, like, why would you? Because they never used to look at, he meant like, you know, I haven't done any fucking backroom deals with mobsters and shit. Right. That's what he was talking about. And that guy was going to win. It looked like, because you know how it is. It was eight years of Reagan. And then it became, oh, the red ties are the problem. Let's go blue tie for eight years. You know, we just, just do that. Yeah. Um, so it was a blue tie guy was coming and, you know, it would have been him. You know, which would come down to charisma. He was a better looking guy. He was going up against George Herbert Walker. 
uh, Bush there, and he didn't have the charisma. He just he did he didn't have that it factor. But then I don't he think got you knocked out, and then Dukakis came in, and Dukakis had less of it, and then he got another four years. I don't think you could be really ugly, like you could be a four or like not the greatest looking guy. But I don't think you're going to win the presidency if you're a fucking just an absolute fucking, you know, I you you, you to be that. Well, position, Trump was kind of a shit show. Yeah, but no, I'm talking like yeah, I mean, but you Obama could see, sort of looked like a so kind of a dork. They all George have a Bush dork. was all right. Clinton looked like a goof. There's never been a like a there's never been like a James 007 president. Just a motherfucker. JFK. That... JFK was the best looking oh, president. Okay, there you go. JFK was the closest one. Yeah. I mean, Reagan looked weird because he had like those those fucking rosy old man cheeks. And then he had like the Fonzie haircut. It was like jet black. <laughs> Jimmy Carter was a mess. Jo Gerald Ford was a good looking dude. He just lost yeah. the roof a little bit. He was, you know, Michigan football player. Nixon veteran. was weird look, looking a little bit. Nixon was a weird looking guy. Yeah. Lyndon Johnson looked like a retired state trooper. <laughs> Eisenhower, we, he was all right. Truman looked like a worm. FDR looked like he was going to keel over. Herbert Hoover, I mean, yeah, fuck, we, that guy looks like he should have been selling peanuts before a baseball game yeah, in yeah. the 30s. Yeah, dude. There's I, been a lot I, of I, fucked up looking people being president. Let's look yeah, that I'm up. Talking. Let me let's look up. Paul, give me your top five. We, we can even name them. Top five best looking presidents. Uh, best JFK. Presidents of all time. All right. Oh, my God. It actually exists. The hottest U.S. presidents ranked. Can't imagine the spam I'm going to get after this. All right, let's see. What do we got here? Number one, JFK. Yeah. Number two, Ronald Reagan. But they show a picture of the guy from the 1950s. That's not fair. Right. It's got to be uh, when he was in office. Number three, Barack Obama. I sort of see it, but his ears are too big. Too big. Takes it down. George Herbert Walker Bush. I mean, the guy's got an incredible story. George W. Bush. Look at the Bushes. You know what they're doing is they're going back, picking like their high school photos. Ulysses S. Grant. Yeah, you can't do that. FDR. Come on. Even when he was young, he looks like that fucking guy from uh, one of those Brat Pack movies. Rutherford B. Hayes. This is bullshit. Yeah. I disagree with all of that. You know why, Paul? Because I'm fucking reasonable. There you go. Reasonable. A reasonable man. That's the I sign. think it's it's time this country had somebody who was fucking reasonable. And I'm that fucking reasonable person for you. I'm Paul Verzi. Fucking reasonable would get votes, dude. No? <laughs> I just want to watch that over and over again. You go, fucking reasonable would get votes. Then you nod with confidence, and I don't say anything, and all your confidence goes away, and you just go, No? <laughs> Did you ever run for shit like that? Did you ever run for like school class, anything? I never did. Paul, I never wanted to be part of anything. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. And it's not. <laughs> it was not because I didn't want to be. I used to fantasize about being out in front of everybody. I was abused, Paul, like most comics. I was abused as a kid. So at that point, I didn't like people. If I'm not away from people, if I'm away from people, no one can hurt me. So the last thing I wanted to do was get out in front of a group of people. And if elected. Yeah, no, I mean, I, dude, I didn't go to my high school reunion. Have no desire. No fucking desire. I went to a high school reunion. Yeah, I got no desire for that, dude. I love the people I went. I, I had a great class, man. Great. I had a really fucking mellow, great class. The class that graduated before me and after me were fucking lunatics. Lunatics. Kept the cops very busy. Very busy. We were we were like sort of happy drunks. Like in, in, in my my grade, like the, the football players, we all just everybody just started hanging out. That just a circle of people that were we used to drink down on this fucking 
this place, this industrial park. And just, it was just like every week a new social group of people came in. Yeah. Like the athletes, the, uh, the background people, the burnouts, the smart kids. Next thing you know, everyone was just sort of like, it just became like this giant sea of drunks. Um, <laughs> no, I look back. It was actually, it was kind of, it was really nice. I think that's why, like when I look back, like there was, there wasn't one person that I hated in my grade. Oh God. I had a big, cl- I mean, I listen, I didn't care for, I didn't care about the kids. I was friends with who I was friends with. I just hated school. I was very distracted. My mother moved me uh, that one time we moved like during a crucial part. And that was really tough and meeting new friends. So sports went out the window because I just wanted to get be have friends. And then I dated girls and I was fucking drinking, doing stupid shit. And as soon as the class. Oh, sounds like me. You were crushing it. Yeah, but but girlfriends, you're playing sports. You had friends. Yeah, but I hated at the actual hours of school, dude. Oh, I know I to, that was the worst. I had to be in homeroom at seven seventeen was homeroom. So like, I six- still drive by my high school, and I was back in my hometown a few weeks ago. Uh, I drove by my hometown, and, and one of the high, one of the it was we had building A, B, and C. I remember building A. I'd be sitting there on the first floor, and I would just be looking out at the street, just thinking like, if I just fucking, I just remember just looking out, being like, that's it right there. That's fr- I could just walk out there. Why can't I just walk out there right now and just walk away from all of this? I fucking hated it. And 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 one of the things that I, I loved about the privilege of becoming a comedian, once you quit your day job, you quit your day job, but then, you know, you got the work of like trying to be- make a name for yourself. But like now, like you make a name for yourself, you can sell tickets. And as long as you bring it, people will keep coming to see you, hopefully. Yep. Um, and you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. I like oh. the fact that I can get up whenever I want to. I can't now because I got kids. But all those years, if I went to bed at four in the morning and I needed eight hours sleep, I would not get up until noon that I could actually do that. No, oh, nothing better. There isn't. There's nothing better than that. Dude, yeah, even like no matter where you get in this business, how fucking fun it is to be a comedian if you can just allow it and not and not get involved in competing with other people and all of that shit. If you just get into the fact that you can go down to a club and do 20 minutes, make people laugh, people, and then people say, hey, great job every fucking time, unless you bomb. And then you get to hang out <laughs> with all these fucking people yeah, laughing your ass off, eating some wings incredible it's, incredible it's actually ridiculous it's it's and that part of your career is actually the most fun and the freest i think you'll ever be that they'll allow you to be as a human being unless you just literally go off the fucking grid but then those people go off the fucking grid now it's like you know you got you got to worry about hunting every day yeah but i think what you said is is uh i think we find it we're fortunate enough to find it Cause there's somebody out there right now, probably listening to this podcast. Who's like, I'm still at the fucking thing. I don't want to be doing. And, um, dude, this UFC fighter guy said the dopest shit ever. He said, he said, if you could be, he said, if you could just get comfortable with the uncomfortable, nobody could fuck with you. He goes like, like he said, you have two lives. He said, and the first one is when you realize like that you, you, you just have one shot, you know? And then he goes, and then that one, and then you got to live that one. Once you realize, once you come to the realization that like you got that shot. And then he just said, dude, be comfortable with the uncomfortable. And he was just like untying his thing. And he goes like, if, if you could be comfortable, with uncomfortable, like who could fuck with you? Like nobody could fuck with you, man. And it's, it's really true, but we found something that was uncomfortable at first, but it gave us freedom, dude. And it's like, like you said, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it just pissed me off when you said wings. I was at the fucking comedy seller table. I should say this cocksucker's name because he's a fucking piece of shit, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> and now I'm the not... other side of comedy. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm, I should say his fucking name because he's a fucking cunt. But I was sitting there and I'm at the comedy seller table and I'm like, I'm going to get wings, man, because the wings are good. So I'm going to get wings. Dude. Should I get wings? And then I'm like looking around and I'm asking people and I go like, I say, hey, man, if I get wings, will you eat some? Meaning I don't want 12 of them. And that's what comes with the order. But I'll probably have like five or six. I'd like to give something. And he just goes, 
I, I like how you're asking, like, I couldn't get my own. And I want to be like, like, I know you could get your own. I know you could get your own. I'm saying I'm want, I'm going to get fucking 12 of them. And I want to give you some, you dumb fuck. You're not on stage right now. You fucking ugly. Nobody. Fuck that guy. <laughs> fuck that guy. dude. <laughs> oh no. That guy is in the Sicilian files now. Oh yeah. No, no, no. It's he like, is, he is in oh, the Bill. official. You're dead to me drawer. <laughs> Bill, I wish you would have saw my face. <laughs> like I just sat there seething. I just sat there fucking seething, dude. Oh, check this out. Check this out. This is really cool. Uh, tell me if you guys can, if you guys can, uh, if you guys could, what's it called? Hear this. See this. The second one begins when you realize you have one. So there's going to come a point in your life where you're like, oh, I got to wake up. That's when life begins. And when that happens, you know what you do? You step outside of your comfort zone. You do the things that are uncomfortable, and then you get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Imagine getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. Who the fuck's going to touch you? You know what I'm saying? You got two lives. That's dope, right? No, he, I felt he danced around the whole fucking day. I, I didn't know what he was talking about. What do you mean? How, what, what, what do you mean? He, what didn't you like about that? He made a great point. He, if you know how to apply it. I mean, he's an MMA fighter, so he probably is going about it that way. But I think that that's yeah, a life. If you know thing. how to apply that. There's a lot of shit that I'm uncomfortable with that I don't want to get comfortable with. Well, I don't think he means go start swimming with sharks. I think what he's saying is the shit that you kind of avoid, that's a weakness in your life. If you can walk into that, then I don't know, Paul, maybe strong. I'm too fucking dumb over here. Maybe I, maybe I, maybe I need a little more. No, it's just one of those things where I was, I was waiting for the, the, I, just I almost thought... understood what he was saying. I thought whatever he's doing, it's working for him. But I just wish he explained it a little slower for someone like me. <laughs> I just kept thinking, here it comes. I'm going to get it. He's building to a point and then it just fucking ended up. When you said he was dancing around it, though, what did you think he was dancing? Yeah, around? You're sitting around and one day you wake up like, fuck, I got to fucking do something. That seemed a little understated for a profound moment in your life where you, you're kind of like, I need to, I don't know, Paul, Paul, don't, don't send me philosophical shit. I mean, <laughs> if he's not going to fucking say what he's thinking, I, you know, get comfortable with the uncomfortable, then who can fuck with you? <laughs> like, and now you're done talking. I have to unwrap that. What the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> and, and at the end, he just goes, you know what I'm saying? But I actually call, I actually I actually thought that I think the uncomfortable is I think it's kind of what Jim Carrey was saying in that commencement speech where he was basically going like you can get that paycheck where you got medical benefits and you're paying your bills in your car and you're getting by with your fucking food budget or you could fucking jump into something that you don't know what the waters are going to be like, but the reward is good. That's what I took from it. Hey, I'm a reasonable man. <laughs> Paul, you're fucking reasonable. You know, I'm not like, saying oh. what he said was wrong. I'm just saying that, like, you know, I have a habit sometimes, Paul, as I think the thought for like three minutes and then I start talking to somebody like they've been listening to my thoughts for three minutes. That's what I felt like. Oh, OK, so you felt like well, in defense of the guy, they he seemed like he'd been talking for a while. Right. And then somebody just who had, had watched all of that took just the ending and then puts it out there. And I, I just felt like I was trying to catch up the whole time he was talking. Well, he actually started with saying you have two lives. And one is when you wake up and realize, oh, fuck, I can't be like, you know, mediocre. That's what I took from it. But hey. But he didn't whatever. say that. But if no, you but say that, then I get it. But, but that's that's what, what, was the, what was the other life? The other life was you looking out the window saying I could just walk out there. He didn't say that. I said that. Right. But that's what he's saying. The first life is. Well, I'm so, oh, just like who's on first. What is the second life actually walking out there? 
The thing you thought of when you said, I, I don't want to fucking be here. I want to go walk out there and be free. He's saying that's the second life. That counts as two lives. That isn't all one thought. I don't want to be here. I got to get the fuck out of here. And then when you fucking make the decision to get out of here, then you're living the life you want to be living. Oh, shit. I should have got comfortable and uncomfortable <laughs> and opened that window and jumped down in those hedges. That fucking dude, what would you do if that comic, that comic said that to you? I love how I can't buy my own. Wings. I would do what you did. I wouldn't have said anything. And then years later, be like, you know what I should have said? I should have said, fuck you, you cunt. Yeah, you never, you never say. You know what's underrated, Paul? Uh, having the ability to say exactly what the fuck you're thinking in the moment. I know. Which is easy to do as a comedian because there's no ramifications. What'd you say? Hey, why don't you go fuck yourself? Everybody's going to laugh. Who gives a shit? Nobody cares. But when it really counts, Paul, all right, when you're in dollar rent a car and you get some douche behind the counter that doesn't like their fucking job and starts taking it out on you, all right, but they got this power over you, Paul. They got the keys to that Hyundai Sonata that you want, right? So you just got to take more shit than you want to take. And then you drive out of that parking lot muttering, already muttering, and you're going to carry that, Paul. No, you know what I'm going to say to him? You're going to get out, Paul. Look, I can see you squinting your eyes. You're squinting your eyes. You're thinking about all the times that you took more than you should have. Paul, you got two lives, okay? You got that moment when you walk up to the dollar rental car and you think that you're not going to meet a cunt. And then you think, whoa, this guy is a fucking cunt. And that's when it's time to not be fucking reasonable. Yeah. You got to tell him that what he did was not appropriate. (laughs) and (laughs) And that you will never be sharing wings with him. Uh fuck. You fucking cunt. Yeah, that was I always brutal, figured dude. just reaching over and going Joe Pesci in casino. Except just I always picture grabbing him by the tie and just slamming their head down so their chin hits the desk and they get knocked out. I do like the idea of stabbing someone in the neck with a pen and then be like, What is that? You hear that, Paul? What is that? Is that a little is girl? That, what do you hear, Frankie? Was that a little girl? You know, uh, dude, I I did that. I did that in the van. In, you stabbed um, a guy in the neck in a van? In, in, in Montreal. Yeah. And I no, I was. Long story short, I come home from a gig. I get a phone call from a woman. And she says to me, I'm not going to mention names. She says to me, but I'll mention the comic I worked with. She goes, hey, are you still with Dom? I was working with Dom Herrera at Atlanta Punchline. Apparently, I'm home and he's at a casino. And she says... Yeah, he's having trouble with his computer. Do you think he could go to his room in the casino? I said, oh, ma'am, I'm sorry. I said, I'm actually home now. I just worked with him in Atlanta. I'm not working with him anymore. She goes, oh, I'm so sorry. And then she goes, by the way, I help manage Dom, but I also own this club in Texas. Blah, blah, blah. If you ever want to come, blah, 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 all this nice stuff. Right? So then I say, let me call this lady in a month, try to get a fucking gig. So I call her up. And I say, hey, I don't know if you remember as Paul Verzi. I worked with Dom. You actually asked if I helped her. Oh, yeah. I said, yeah. I said, I'd really love to. She goes, well, no, why would I book somebody that's not really local right now to, to, to feature? And uh, I go, oh, well, you kind of told me. She goes, no, we have a lot of gr-. She goes, we have a lot of great talent. We have a lot of great talent here locally. So, like, why would I do that? Really cold and rude and, like, was so nice when she needed my help. Right? Fast forward. I'm in the fucking van. This is fucking gangster, dude. This was the shit. I'm in the van, Montreal. I think Adam Ray is in the back. Other comics are in the back. And I'm going to do a practice for a TV set I'm doing. And she was one of the people that takes notes. And she sits in. She sits next to me. Everyone's packed in there. I don't know what came over me. I just didn't care. Because this was like, now I was headlining. And I was like my third time in Montreal. And she, I just didn't give a fuck. And she goes, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to be reviewing your thing tonight. My name is so-and-so. And I go, no, I know who you are. I go, you were actually really rude to me, a man, on the phone not, not long ago. And, dude, she just goes, oh. and the whole In the go, van? In the van, dude. In the van. Oh, and everybody, shit. Paul every, went out the window and started every, walking down the street. <laughs> and I was, that was my second life. 
And uh, I said, I said, uh, yeah, you were really rude to me, man. I called up and you were like, and she just was like, oh my God, I'm so, and everybody in the car. And I was like, oh, you know, whatever it is, what it is, but it bothered me. And, and you're like, you were nice once and then you weren't and shit. And I just fucking looked forward, dude. And everyone in the van was like, oh, I could tell everyone was like, oh shit. And it felt fucking great. It felt fucking great. And it's oh, like, mercy. you know, fuck you and your fucking club. You know, it's like you treat people like that. Get the fuck out of here. Think I want to go to think I want to go to fucking Texas all the time. I'll go to fuck. I'll go to the fucking Addison and I think I give a fuck about you being rude. To, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's like if you're if you're rude to me once, it's a rap. It's a fucking rap, dude. If you're going to treat there's me no like coming that, back. No, there's no coming back. And then I'm going to get bigger than you and tell stories like this. And you're going to be fucking sitting there, hopefully one day, knowing that it comes back to you. That's the, that's the way to win. Anybody, you know how you win? You fucking win by success and you win by knowing who you are and being confident and being comfortable with the uncomfortable. Paul Verzi, fucking oh, reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever had a moment where you actually told somebody, no, dude, you were a fucking asshole in that moment. I don't have many. Of Not them. without saying it like that. And then I become wrong. What was great about what you did was you kept your cool and you didn't drop any F-bombs. Right. Even though you were thinking you're a cunt, you didn't say you're a cunt. So all of my stories are like that. I say, I say it, you know, the wrong way. Yeah, if you drop a, if you drop an f bomb or the voice raises, same thing in your relationship. Yeah, it's like Paul. I I've, I've been in the basement forever. I'm I'm never. We're never gonna have a winning record when it comes to shit like that. But you know what I need to do, Paul? I need to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. I need to the, learn how to tell somebody to go fuck themselves without actually saying that. You are the Baltimore Orioles of the East when it comes to... <laughs> you are just in the basement. That is so sad that you picked that. They were such a great team when I was growing up. I, I fucking always never... Like, I never hated the Orioles, but, dude, every year you look in the East. Dude, I think they just lost 18 straight. I mean, they're like... Dude, they're on like... A, they're on a level of like... It's brutal, dude. It's fucking. How about my Yankees, by the way? 11 in a row. Just climbing. Yeah. Climbing. My Red me... Sox are just. I guess this year, what we were really trying to do was just wait for sale to get back. And then next year, we're supposed to, you know, somebody's like, we'll get Clayton Kershaw or something like I don't know. But oh, it was hard you watching get... you guys beat us three games in a fucking row. I'm just hoping, uh, you know, I'm really hoping somebody knocks you guys out, Paul. I'm not going to lie to you. No, I don't listen, like you guys. I, I get it. I don't I get like it. you guys. I'm I'm being I'm being honest about it. No, okay. of course. Well, well, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. You're a little passive aggressive with your hatred of Boston sports. No, it's not true. It is. It is true. No, no. You ask. I oh, I like this guy. I like that guy, or whatever. No, no. You know, I and never then, hated and also, the yeah, we, we, we fucked him in the ass. You know, when you win, oh, you win. I said you one thing. You get all. Yeah, you do. You do, Paul. You get hostile. You get hostile. I was. You're right, Paul. When you when you're full of shit, you 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 squint. No. When your feelings get hurt, no. Or you're being full of shit, you, your eyes squint. You were just squinting. No. Am I wrong? You weren't just squinting? I I have no problem with the Celtics or the Patriots, and I definitely have a hatred for the Red Sox. I mean, there's nothing. It's the same way. You don't hate the Knicks, right? You don't, I've, you've never been like, fuck the Knicks. I don't care about the Celtics or the Patriots. I have a hatred for the Red Sox and, and the Cowboys and the Lakers in a way. Which is weird. I don't know why the Lakers thing with me. Something happened. Something happened along the way where I don't know if it was the Shaq and Kobe. I think it was the Shaq and Kobe thing where when they and Phil Jackson. That whole thing was that was the beginning of the pylons, which for some reason Lakers fans don't see. They, they look at it like the Boston Big Three was not a reaction to what the fuck they were doing. Because they were showing like, it's like when the Red Sox had a $180 million roided up free agent team. We didn't want to do that, Paul. That's yeah. what we had to bring to the party because you guys were doing it. You guys were spending 200 fucking million. What were we supposed to do, Paul? Bring a knife to a gunfight? No, keep up with the Joneses. I get it. That's right. And what? And all of a sudden the Astros bring out a fucking trash can. And then, because what? Because they, they can't afford to spend 200 grand. They had to go to Home Depot. Well, I think they did a little more than a trash. I think they had, didn't they have like wires on their neck? 
<laughs> those guys, like half of those guys were robots. Right? Oh, stop it. <laughs> Listen to the Yankee <laughs> fans complaining about the fucking Astros cheating is a joke. Come on. The shit the fucking Red Sox and Yankees did at the turn of the century. $200 million roided up free agent teams coming up with no necks. Crushing nice. balls. Come on. Using the Kansas City Royals as a triple-A team. Get the fuck out of here. Quit your whining. The Astros championship was legit. They finally got out, got themselves a couple of choppers, and they cut some people in half. Good for them. I say good for them. All right. Dude, these fucking cunts are on the sideline now with iPads and shit. I know. I don't like when the, I don't like that they do this thing now. When the guy's coming up, they flip something and they're like, oh, there's the scouting report. It's like, what happened? Can you do Donna? that when you're taking a test in high school? Can you lift up your little fucking thing and do that? No, that's a great no, point. No, you cannot. You would be called that, cheater. You would call that, cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. That's a great point. I don't like it. I don't like when a comic goes on there. By the way, never did it. It's part of my OCD. Well, would you get all the biggest guys on your block to go play a bunch of eight-year-olds down the down the end and then have a championship parade for yourself? No. Would you feel you like a champion? No. No, you would not. But, but I wouldn't go on stage with a legal pad or my phone. Never done it. It's cheating. It's cheating the crowd. It's cheating yourself. What, making a set list? Set list is one thing. I'm talking about like these comics that go up there. Oh, what's the other thing I wanted to talk about? It's, yeah, what do you guys think about like? So That's a set gonna... list. I don't know, man. I'm not for that. Paul, listen. Nothing scares, nothing scares a guy like you. Like a pen and a piece of paper. Let's be honest, Paul. <laughs> you are not a guy looking forward to the first day of school, Dude. other than the chicks you wanted to bang. And the guys you wanted to hang. Let's be honest, Paul. Paul, let's be honest. Academia. You go into a club. not your strong suit. You go into a club. People paid a ticket to see comedy. Oh. I know if I'm sitting there and the guy goes, hold on a second. Let no me one changed the subject like Paul Verzi. What do you guys, so what do you guys think of this? Come on, man. Don't do that. Crowd deserves better. Be prepared. Hey, you came to cl the club on a Tuesday night. All right, if you're coming on a showcase fucking night, you're going to see comics working on their acts. They didn't come down there to see me. You go to a Paul Verzi show, and Paul Verzi shows up, you know? Oh, you definitely can't do it on a special. With a pair of, of, of fucking ponies. Not, he doesn't even wear his Air Jordans. <laughs> Only he has on one gold chain, and he's fucking looking at a bunch of notes. Yeah. You should have had your act together by then. I love what Don Rickles said. Don Rickles was at John Stamos' 50th birthday. Mm -hmm. And Rickles is going, uh, he's talking about roasts. And he's got his head down. And he's going, he goes, yeah, never used notes either. And he pointed to somebody. Everyone, oh, shit. It's the other thing. These guys at roasts, they go up 27 roast jokes that everybody wrote for them. And it's just like, I don't, I don't like that. I like, go with your shit. Well, a roast is a different thing. Because everybody's going up doing the same subject. Right. That makes sense. You can't fucking really work this shit out. You're doing it the first time. Dude, what the, What about the fucking president? He's fucking sitting there with, with it, you know. He can't memorize that shit? Speech somebody else wrote? No, it's you true. back in America, Paul? Is that what you're doing here? When I'm president, I wouldn't have a prompter. I'm going freestyle. I'm going off the cuff, dude. I'm going off the cuff. Thank you guys for coming, American people. I appreciate everything. We're in a crisis now with a pandemic. I want you to know we got the best minds working this, okay? We're going to do everything in our power to make you and your family safe. I got the best doctors here, okay? We got the best scientists working day and night to put this thing to an end, to change this virus. If any of you guys have questions, I'm going to answer them as honestly as I can. I have I a question. My... Yeah, go ahead. Mr. President, how are you going to change the virus? Well, what we don't know if we could change it, but we think we could slow it down. Uh, and we think that we can have something. Oh, but you just said you were going to change it. That's why I got confused. You're going to change it into what? Something that wasn't contagious? Well, I don't use a prompter like everybody else, so I'm sorry for that uh, misunderstanding. What I meant was... You feel because you don't use a prompter, you're better than other presidents that we've talked to before? Maybe not better, but a little more honest and reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Paul. Uh, uh, Paul Verzi is a fun one. I'm tired. Olympian.
presidential candidate. Yeah. Headline and comic. I'll tell you, Paul, you got a lot of clubs in that bag. Found out today I got a hernia. What happened? Yeah. Went to the doctor. I was like, dude, my groin's a little fuck. He goes, all right, lay down. He just goes, I knew I had something because he goes, in my groin too, like not my balls, like my groin and my like next to, and he goes cough. And I go, <coughs> and he goes to the next one. And I go, he goes cough. I go, <coughs> and he goes to the, 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 where the problem is. He goes cough. And I go, <coughs> and he goes, Oh, <laughs> then I knew, <laughs> then I knew. And then he goes, ah, I feel you got a little hernia. He goes, nothing. I don't think anything to, you know, we have to just, you know, we'll keep an eye on it, but like, it's really small. So what just, is a hernia? A hernia is when kind of tissue breaks through the, I guess the, the way I was described it is that there's like tissue and fat in your skin and, or, and, and it just starts to protrude out a little bit like well, that. Well, why don't I do us both a favor? Why don't I just look it up? Huh? It's, it's tissue protruding for sure. Final answer. Yes. Some sort of tissue or fatty thing protruding. Final out answer. Of Final answer. Yeah. What is a hernia? Yeah. Gotta make uh, a hernia it. happens when an internal organ pushes through a weak spot in your muscle or tissue. There are several types of hernias that can you can experience, including inguinal hernias, femoral hernias, umbilical hernias, and hiatal hernias. If you have a hernia, it's important to get it treated quickly. So it's an organ, Paul. Pressing through muscle or tissue that has become weak. You said it was tissue well, my, pushing through. All right. Well, mine is in, mine is a groin, so I don't know what organs there, but I got the. I think the it's groin your, your dick's coming through uh, your ball sack there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Wikipedia. Let, let's let's go. Let's go reasonable here. Wikipedia. Reasonable. A hernia is an abnormal exit of tissue or an or of tissue or an organ. So you're all right. Such yeah. as the bowel through the wall of the cavity which it normally resides. Hernias come in a number of types. Oh my god. Risk factors for the development of a hernia include smoking. You can get a hernia through smoking? Oh fuck. Dude, Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, obesity, pregnancy, peritoneal disease dialysis collagen vascular disease and an appendectomy oh yeah i had an appendectomy that's how i got a fucking hernia oh brother yeah. i've had a cigar in eight days paul dude every doctor asks you smoke like it's just so but they mean cigarettes by the way they don't so you, no listen i talked to my doctor my doctor said an occasional cigar paul i got not, life insurance just smoking cigars, how much more it was, was ridiculous. Yeah. Listen, Paul, you can either listen to the fucking truth <laughs> or you can say doctors don't know what they're talking about. It's fake news. You could be well, one or the other. Any Do doctor in will. any doctor in the world will tell you an occasional cigar is way better than smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. That's a fact. Okay, Paul. That's like any doctor will tell you doing a bump is way better than shooting heroin. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, you're comparing it to fucking heroin. I mean, none of it's good. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's good. You know why he came to that conclusion, Paul? Because you're fucking Bye. reasonable. I'm, re you're fucking I'm reasonable. reasonable. You're reasonable. Listen, Paul, I don't understand. You know, if there's anything I'm going to ask God, if, if that ever happens, is I'm just going to be like, dude, what the fuck? Why, 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 why the Brussels sprouts make me thin, but cookies make me fat? I mean, what kind I of know. a fucking sick joke was that? I know. And or does the devil you, make cookies? Well, he's going to say temptation. That's what he's going to say. You know, I don't Eve buy into it. You can't ask your question, Paul. If God's fucking God, right? And he can do anything he fucking wants to. Why does he just get rid of the devil? Um, I mean, there's got to be yin and yang, right? You got to have both. Says who? I mean, I think if they, you know, I think God outweighs the devil. 
But you got to have a villain. Yeah, for a good story. I'm saying if this is real. <laughs> but the dude, devil was just an angel. How all of a sudden did he rise up to the to the point of something God has to deal with? It's the typical story of a villain. He was a disgruntled. He was disgruntled. Oh, I'm not talking about Sid Fields how to write a fucking script. I'm saying if this shit is actually true. You're fucking breaking down the next fucking Fast and Furious. Oh, well, you know, you need a good villain. I mean, how, how are we going to go three seasons with this shit? We need 100 episodes. We got to have a villain. That would be the one thing you would ask God. That's what you would ask God. You would go, why can't I have a cookie, but I could have Brussels sprouts? I would be like, where the fuck are you getting off judging me for what the fuck I did after what happened to me by the fucking cunts that you made, that you made your work, douchebag, your work that you take no fucking responsibility for. You made serial killers. You made pedophiles. You made sociopaths. You made all of that shit. You made all. Look what you did with the fucking animals. Look at the fucking rabbit, Paul. Dude, he would not be happy with your approach at the pearly gates, dude. I know where I'm going anyway, Paul. What the fuck? I might as well get my money's worth. No. You can't go up there like Bobby Knight out of the gate. First of all, fuck, fuck how I'm coming at him, Paul. Answer those questions. If there's a God, Paul, why does he make pedophiles? Uh, That's a great question. Why does he make sociopaths? Why does he make planes crash? I get it. I get it. It's a it's a great question. It's a great question. Paul, but I'll, I'll give you this as a God, but not one who cares. He's bored. He set this whole fucking thing up to watch us go at it. Look at yeah, animals, they, Paul. Look at animals. Predator prey. Yeah, what but the why fuck is there... did a rabbit ever do to anybody to deserve the fucking life it has? <laughs> yeah. The fucking I mean... bunny rabbit. Little stupid white tail on its ass, hopping around, fucking buck teeth. Okay, nothing. It's goddamn I mean, snakes they're... and hawks and fucking stoats, all these goddamn fucking varmints coming up, just eating a thing alive. And all they can do to survive is try to outfuck this slaughter. That's their lot in life, Paul. People Look, cutting their great... feet off so they could have good luck. Tie dyeing their feet different colors to match their fucking t shirts. Yeah, but you could go the other way too. You go the other way. Go why the other there... way. Go the other way and convince me. By all means, no, convince no. me. Why is there why is there love? Why is there why is there friendship? Why is there, you know. Having having children that you love on a level you didn't know before and all those things that you get out of life. Why is there beautiful staring at the ocean or staring at, you know, all the things? Well, if you created a universe, would you create love, children, and all of that? Yeah. Would you also create pedophiles? Sociopaths? Murderers? no. No, I wouldn't. Just to balance it? Well, you got to have the yin and yang. No, you Why make a good point. I have this guy with his family that people love unless I have a fucking axe murderer wanting to go in there and chop everybody up. Look, so I get I'm, something. I'm, I'm not arguing, man. You're making a good point. I'm not arguing that I'm just saying like, you know, I think that we don't know what it is. I think there's something we don't know what it is. And I'm fine with saying I don't know. People need to f- be fine with saying I don't know. You know? No, I don't know. Because that's what all you religious guys do is you tap up. Well, you know, it's a big mystery. It's what bigger mean, than us. All, we can't fucking. Ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba, da, ba. You got first, no answer, Paul. I said I believe in something. I said I believe in something. I believe in something, too, but I don't believe in something that cares. Uh, You know, I guess. I Come guess, on, Paul. Paul. Come on, Paul. Like, you just have this out the whole fucking time. You have this whole fuck. It's a devil. You got freedom of choice. The devil, the devil made you do it. Uh, you know, that's like these fucking assholes you get in business with and then they steal from you and you audit them and you catch it and they sit there with a the straight face. Oh, that's the accounting department. Yeah, I mean, listen, I wish I knew. I wish you did too, Paul. I wish I knew. You know what, Paul? Fuck you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Paul. Why does somebody, why does somebody jogging get murdered and get fucking 
cut up and buried. And I, I know, I, I, you know, I, it's a really fucked up thing, you know, but you know, why is a blowjob incredible? Why is sex incredible? Why is that? Why is that shit dope? You know, it's, 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 there is some shit that's really amazing. I know. But here's my thing is if you're going to make all that amazing shit and also have those lunatics walking around, don't fucking come after me with your judgment. You should be saying like, Hey man, sorry about that. But what if you know, I just kind of put that guy in the game to kind of make it interesting for me when I look down there to see, you know, you know, every, every good story needs a good villain. No, but what if he says this to you? What if he says, I'm, I'm really sorry for those things, but there's a lot le- there's a lot less murderers and pedophiles than there is love and good people. And also, those people what, so now I'm going apples. to hell? No, no, but I'm, I'm going to hell because because uh, what? Because I didn't go to church every fucking week and bow down to you? No, but what if the, the murderers are just like the, the misguided that he couldn't help or do? What do you mean he couldn't help it? He's God. He can do whatever the fuck he wants to do. He created the universe in seven days. He can't get some stop. He can't fucking solder the wires correctly so someone doesn't want to do all of that shit. What if the devil got him? Dude, the fucking devil was just an angel. <laughs> God create. God created the devil too. He created everything. Paul, Wait, let me tell you something. You can fucking do any backflip you want. At the end of the day, the shit doesn't make sense. And I'm getting mad at not the true thing that's out there. I'm getting mad at what fucking dopes told me it was. That's the that's the reality of it. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I you know, you're not going to. I hear what you're saying. You make valid points. You know, I'm a positive guy. So I like to. Passive you know, aggressive. I, Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm a no, 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 no. That's directed at me. You no, know? definitely not. It was. Okay. Definitely yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Paul. You're five not. eight. You're five eight. No, 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 no. It's not passive aggressive. If I was passive aggressive, I wouldn't do. I wouldn't. I don't go like that. I'm not a passive aggressive guy, and I wouldn't do that to you. I'm a positive guy, so I like to think. Okay, maybe there was something, a plan for that awful shit. Why that awful shit happened, and I'm gonna po- focus on the positive, good shit that happened. That's all I'm saying. Because I want to hope something's good. Who doesn't? I don't want to fuck. I don't want this shit to end. And then all of a sudden, it's just, you know what I mean? Well, like, I don't give a fuck about any of it. I just resent the fact that someone's going to be sitting there going like, and eh, August 23rd, 1991. Well, what was up with that? <laughs> <laughs> it's gives me like, really? <laughs> the fuck is up with you? Yeah. Andrew, you got any input on this? Are you a religious kid or no? Now drag him into this shit. People get weird about this stuff. I don't even know why I went down this road. Are you wearing a Tom and Jerry t-shirt? Yeah, you know what? My nice. daughter went out and was uh, was getting some cool t-shirts and she wanted to get a cool t-shirt for me. And she wanted to get me a SpongeBob SquarePants. And my mo- her mother, my wife, kept saying he didn't watch that when he was growing up. Your dad watched Tom and Jerry and Mickey Mouse and uh, Top Cat and all that shit. So she Dude, got it for me. And she gets you know, excited whenever I wear it. Today was her first day of school. By the way, underrated. Your what? son going to a park for the first time, playing with other baby boys, and one of the baby boys rips a toy out of his hand, and, you, and your son gives that kid a smack and gets the toy back. Wow. Oh, Dude. You know what wow. I love about it? Nobody was surprised in my family. We all knew we had it in him. That's amazing. We knew it. We saw it. Oh, you could see it. I told you that one kid that was standing around going, eh, eh, eh. his fucking dad was looking off in the distance. I-, I swear to God, there was a fucking little kid. He's standing on a slide. My son's like trying to figure stuff out, discovering shit. And there's a kid just going, like, eh, eh. he's like looking around. And then I looked at his father and his father was just like gazing off. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude taking your kid to the park is nerve-wracking though dude i saw a little boy and he's running 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 and sophia was like two not even and he was like four and i'm going and he got like 10 yards and i'm going oh my god he's not stopping and he trampled my daughter she's crying and the grandmother got up and i dude i was like hey you gotta chill like i said something the grandmother was like get over here like he ran my and i wanted to fuck i wanted to grab this little kid because he hurt my little girl my little girl was so little but that's nice that your boy 
got a toy taken from him. I was like, no, 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 no. It's not happening. Yeah. Here's one for you. I went to the playground one time and there was some seven-year-old girl and no one would play with her. And she was walking up to people saying, will you play with me? And they said, no. And she was seven. She's going to carry that for the rest of her life. Those are the moments that I go, there's no God. What did she do as a seven-year-old to deserve that? To be the kid at the playground that nobody, like nobody wanted up. She ended up having to play with like adults. Yeah, that's. Dude, yeah. I carried that for like three weeks. I couldn't stop thinking about her. How long ago? Oh, it was fucking months ago. I don't know. That's Plug horrible. Me. It's fucking horrible. And what did she do when she's a fucking seven-year-old kid? And now she's walking around with this fucked up bullshit because no kids want to play. And then she's going to marry some asshole that treats her like shit because she's got no fucking sense of self-worth now. Dude, that's true and a great point. And you know what? My my son was So what is some fucking invisible cunt going to be asking me questions for while he's letting that happen? When all he had to do was just go whoosh, whoosh, whoosh and make the universe in seven fucking days. Well, you don't know if she hits the fucking mega millions in a couple of years. So maybe that was the... But like the trade off, but uh, that was one of the biggest cop outs <laughs> on a fucking question ever. So uh, at nine, she's going to be going in getting scratch tickets. This is how far she fell. <laughs> <laughs> no, Let me but get two listen, pickums and uh, a lucky you a good, strike. You made a good point, though, man. You made a really good point because my son said something to my daughter. And he said something like, shut up. Or he was like, and she looks up to him like a God. And then I called him aside and I go, look, I, you, you call you told your daughter to shut. I mean, you told your sister to shut up and you told, you treat her like that. And she looks up to you. I go, so what's going to happen now? She's going to be with somebody later in life, date somebody and that she's going to really like, and she's going to think it's okay for them to say, shut up and them to treat your sister like that. And then what are you going to do? And dude, it fucking hit. I go, so you're going to have somebody talk to your sister like that because she loves you and looks up to you. So what if a guy does that or, or tries to hit her or fucking talk to her like that? Watch how you talk to your sister. And he fucking just was like, and I was just like, yep, point made. Because if you if, if, if <laughs> they think that that's OK, they can't think that that's OK. That's a good dad day. That's a good that dad. Was Paul Versey. Three, two, one. Bottom of the net. Reasonable man. You're a reasonable man, Paul. Wow, we're going long. We're almost doing two hours here. We're uh, that's how good the show is, everybody. Speaking hey, you of know the what's show, what's underrated, Paul? What? You know what's underrated? Getting in a fucking helicopter, flying it by yourself, and crushing it, and coming back, and getting in your old pickup truck and drinking an ice cold root beer. That's the day I had yesterday. Oh, that's a can't fuck with that. Yeah. Kind of, it kind of went, uh, kind of went. Did you light a stick? Did you light a stick with the root beer? No, because I'm, I'm, you know, oh, you're trying to cut back. I, I was doing so great. I didn't smoke from February to like the end of May, and then the summer, dude. Oh, the summer. Reason why they think California's on fire is how many fucking cigars <laughs> I've been smoking. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm, I'm, I'm sort of off them. But uh, I think the next one I'll have is maybe when I do me, you, and Joe Bartnick. Are going to see the Penn State Nittany Lions. We're doing a show out there. We're going to go to a game. We're going to we're going to fucking bet the game or something. Get oh yeah, something. get a little action. Oh, Paul, I mean, do you a... like action, Paul? Do you like action? Is there anything better than a little action? Oh yeah, it's nothing better. A little juice. Hundreds. You know, where, where is excitement you have is when you're in a room and nobody knows you got juice on the game. That's totally just living in your own little fucking world. My wife knows because I never go to the bathroom. <laughs> she, i never go get a drink i never get a snack she knows games i didn't bet on i walk away i'll grab a drink i'll take a piss games i got juice on you know you know me bill Do I, who likes to be right more than me in a sporting prediction i mean i live for it yeah i live for it um but thank you guys so much for uh subscribing liking the show continue to subscribe, like, get anything better podcast where you get all your podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, um, Salt Lake City, one of my favorite cities, one of my favorite clubs, September third and fourth ever. You know, Wise it. Guys. I know it. Everybody knows it. One of the greats. 
September 3rd and 4th. Wise guys. Uh, September I haven't 15th, been to fucking Philly. Utah in forever. Sorry, go ahead. I didn't thought you would. No, know. no, no. Uh, Philly, the 15th, and I'll be at Levity Live the 16th through the 18th, the 18th, shooting my next special. And guys, if you are in Boston, the New England area, Connecticut, I will be doing my first show at the Wilbur ever, October 22nd. Want to fill that puppy up. I love that place. So uh, get tickets for that. All tickets will be at paulverzi.com. Check out the Verzi Effect. Check out Monday Morning Podcast. And um, that's it. And God bless. God bless you all. God bless all of you. God God bless everybody. Uh, Is there anything else? No, I think we got it. I think after my fucking ranting about the higher power, I think we're good. No, no, that's good radio. And you know what? It's a good question. And everybody's got that question. Let me tell you something. Anybody that gets mad at that question is 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 not understanding that that's a logical, reasonable, reasonable thing to think. Yeah, I believe in some, but why is horrible stuff happening? That's a normal question people go through. Okay. Paul, let's not get back into it, man. No, we're not. I'm just saying. Off again. I don't want anybody getting fucking mad at, at that. You know? It's like these fucking people. I'll tell you why. Because fucking, it's like you don't know. You don't know. Yeah, but yeah, okay. didn't I? Didn't I create that by opening up my big stupid mouth? No. What'd you create? Good fucking content. Fuck these people that don't get. Well, it. I don't even know how to fucking say appropriate. Appropriate if it's fucking spelled out. Who the fuck am I to question the creator? This is when I walk it all back, Paul. No, no, all you right. didn't crush the <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's the end of the show. Till next week, we're out of here. Take care.